neno moja najua oh ni salama moyoni mwangu ni salama niyo napoamani kama shwari We welcome those who are joining us via Facebook. Continue being blessed. I also welcome those who are joining us via Sayare Television. Continue being blessed. And those who are joining us via Sayare Radio. You are joining to a service at Gospel Power Exposition Center. Redeemed Gospel Church Kitale. Amen. So if you are on TV or any other media, please invite somebody to watch with you. So we began speaking about towards the destination. And today we get to part two of the same. We are going to have several parts. The only thing that can stop us is if Jesus blows, I mean, commands the blow of the trumpet. Because that one when it blows, then we stop where we have stopped and we go. But nothing, nothing else under the sun should stop us. So today we get to the second part. Now, we are going to dwell a lot in the book of Revelation. And today we start talking about what Christ has said to the churches directly. Now we know that uh, the whole of Revelation is to the whole world, so the church is in that there. But there are those letters inside it that he wrote specifically to the church. That is, to them that are already in the believing. So these are the letters we are, we, we are, we are getting to now. So these letters address the state and the stage of the churches. Now we said last time that even though the letters are addressed to only seven churches of Asia, they are meant for all churches. So today we are going to start seeing that not only are they meant for the, for the congregating churches but also to the individual Christians. So it's not, it's not going to address us as a group. You should open your heart as an individual because it will speak to you as an individual. Now in these seven letters of Revelation 2 and 3 we shall find encouragement and we shall also find admonition. Now we shall find in the letters vertical and horizontal perspective of the Christian church. Amen. So vertical in that from the time the church began. From the time it began. Through the years. Up to today. Horizontal in that. At any age. We find that there are people who are going to be. Or, or congregations that are going to fall into one of the groups that are going to be addressed. So we have said that you, you see it as addressed to yourself. Because any, any, anyone age or any congregation 
There are all those those uh, stages or those characteristics. Even in this congregation, you'll find that we are here but we are at diverse levels. The purpose of Jesus Christ speaking to the church by, the, by those letters was that he may have some Uniform standard. So he was sharpening each group so that they could get to where they are supposed to be all of them. Addressing what did not please him in any part. And encouraging others. In fact, even in, I mean, commending those ones who were found without fault. That, that others may emulate what they were doing. So that is also the state in this place today. So that uh, when you listen to it, don't say, this is how we are. Look at yourself as an individual. So, because it is good to mention at this stage that there is a difference between the church of Christ and the Christian church. The church of Christ and the Christian church. There is a difference. So, many, many people fall within the Christian church. And that is why you can find a nation being referred to as 80% Christian. Because you find Peter, James and John selling Chang'a. They are Peter, James and John because one time they passed through church and they were given names. And you, you will find uh, uh, Mary Immaculate inside the bar. Or inside any one of such places. And you will find that the, that the two thieves that were caught were Michael and Gabriel. Because they passed through the church. And even when, if they happen to, to die, the church will be there to bury them. Because they are considered to be Christians. You can have that even in a congregation like this. You, are, you may be a Christian because you are a member of this congregation. But that does not make you a member of the Church of Christ. Because the Church of Christ is composed of all those who have sincerely belonged to Christ because they have, they have confessed their sins and they have been washed and sanctified by the blood of Jesus. And therefore now they purpose to stay in that holiness that they have been freely given by that blood. So that you are part of the congregation and that the church buries you doesn't mean that you are part of the church of Christ. So as we continue in our, in our study, it is good at every stage to ask yourself, where do I belong? Amen. And the purpose of our study is that we may identify the, char the characteristics addressed in the letters. And that we may take appropriate steps as the master will always 
recommend in any one of those letters. Where he finds something he wants corrected, he says clearly that this is what I, I counsel you to do. Now today we have had a long, long introduction which will, which will go for all the letters. So I believe other letters we shall go through them very fast. So today we start with the first one. The letter to the Ephesians or Ephesian church. And to the angel of the church of Ephesus write, These things says he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand, who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. Ufunua Yohana mbili kuanzia moja, kwa malaika wakanisa lililoko Efeso andika, haya ndiyo anenayo ye azishikae hizo nyota saba katika mkono wake wakuume, ye aendaye katikati ya vile vinara saba vya dhahabu. I know thy works and thy labor and thy patience and how thou canst not bear them which are evil and thou hast tried them which say they are apostles and are not and hast found them liars. Nayajua mapendo matendo yako na taabu yako na subira yako na yakuwa huwezi kuchukuliana na watu wabaya tena umewajaribu wale wajitao mitume nao sio ukawaona kuwa waongo and has born and has as patience and for my name's sake has labored and has not fainted tena tu, tu, ulikuwa na subira na kuvumilia kwa ajili ya jina langu wala hukuchoka let us pause on that letter at that point and let us see how much it, repl it reflects high quality commitment. Up to that point. Jesus says to this church, I know your works. I see how you're working. I see the things you're doing. You have labored. You are patient. And you don't bear with them which are evil. And you have tried them which say that they are apostles. Yet they are not. And you have found them liars. You have born. And as patience, verse 3. You are born and as patience. And for my name's sake has labored and has not gotten tired. Amen. Amen. Has labored and has not gotten tired. How to that far anybody would want to belong to that church? You say that is a committed people. Up to that point everyone will belong to that place. I say that is what I want to be. Committed to my God. That I may live for him that way. That I may have passions as I serve him. That I may not be tired in, in serving him. That I may not be found intermingled with them that are sinners. That even those that come as apostles, I may have the discernment to know they are not. Because that's a good, a good position to be in. But when you come to verse 4, it says, Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee. I have somewhat against you. I have something against you. That is the bad part. It is bad when Jesus has anything against you. You want to be on his side. You want to walk with him. You want him to be on your side. You want him to fight for you. But when there's anything that now make you face each other antagonistically, 
Then you would not want that. Basi, hiyo. Amen. You would not want that. Because hiyo. that is not good for you. Maana hiyo si kwako. Despite all the things we have read from verse 2 to verse 3. Kando na yale mambo Nice powerful things. Mambo mazuri yenye nguvu. Good quality. Tabia nzuri. Yet we see. Lakini sasa tunaona. That there is something that could come. Kuna kitu ambacho kingetokezea. Despite all that. Kando na yale mengine. And make you or make him stand against you. Na kufanya kumfanya yeye asimame kinyume na wewe. And what is that? Na hicho ni nini? He says. Anasema because thou hast left thy first love. Sababu wewe umeuacha upendo wako wa mwanzo. Amen. Amen. Because you have left your first love. Sababu umeuacha upendo wako wa mwanzo. Now many times when we read that, na wakati mwingi tunaposoma hayo, we think it is referring to us loving each other. Tunadhani kwamba inatuhusu sisi kupendana kati yetu. And that is why many people say oh that church doesn't have love. That group doesn't have love. That fellowship doesn't have love. Ndio maana watu wengi wanasema hilo kanisa halina upendo hicho kundi hakina upendo la. And they don't show they they themselves don't show their love. Na wenyewe pia waonyeshe upendo wao wenyewe. But this is not just that. Lakini hii sio hivyo. This could just be that love could just be a portion just a fraction. Wa upendo unaweza kuwa tu sehemu ndogo. This love Upendo. is love towards him. Ni upendo kumuelekea yeye. Is it, the love that will cause those qualities up there be of acceptable standard with him. Ule upendo ambao utafanya zile tabia zikaweza kiwango cha kubalika na yeye. Because he says in verse 5, Sababu anasema katika mstari wa 5, Remember therefore from whence thou art fallen. Basi kumbuka ni wapi uliko anguka. And repent. Na ukatubu. And then he says, and do the first works. Alafu anasema, ukayafanya yale matendo ya kwanza. Amen. Amen. He says, you have lost love. Anasema, umepoteza upendo. And because of that, hiyo, you have come out of the first works. Umeto, umetoka katika yale matendo ya mwanzo. Hallelujah. Amen. Bless you with the name of Jesus. You have lost the first love. Ule upendo wa mwanzo. And therefore, you have lost the first works. Kwa hivu, ukapoteza yale matendo ya mwanzo. Repent back to the first love and get doing the first works. Is somebody getting something? You have got to set your heart really, really ready and you have got to keep up because very soon the, the, the preaching will be over. Repent and do the first works. Or else I will come unto you quickly. And will remove the candlesticks out of his place. Except to repent. Let us think about that. Amen. Now, when he talks of the first ones, we just must go back to the foundation of the church in the book of Acts. Time will not allow us to open there and read. But we know how the church began. How upon that upper room in Jerusalem, the Holy Spirit came upon the 120 who were waiting in prayer. And they became bold and, uh, uh, and uh, the whole city knew they were there. And everybody from every walk of life who was in that city was gathered at that place. And with boldness, the first gospel was preached. And the, the first multitude of people were saved. About 3,000 people. They continued together. Amen. Amen. They prayed always. They broke the bread always. They had fellowship house to house. 
they evangelize their neighborhood. They even suffered for it and some died. And because of the love they had for them, for him who had saved them, they never considered that as something negative. They rejoiced that they were found worthy to suffer for him or for his name. Bless you be the name of Jesus Christ. So when Jesus says, go back to the first love. We must go back and see what happened in Acts. And that is how the church began in Acts. So that is the standard. Bless you be the name of the Lord. So that is the standard. Amen. But now when we read the, in, 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 in uh, the letter to the to the Ephesians church in, in, in Revelation chapter 2. We have seen that the works are there. Amen. Amen. The works are there. The characteristics seem good. Amen. Amen. But yet, Jesus is not satisfied with that. Because he says that there's lack of love in it. So it means the church has deteriorated. Amen. Amen. It has deteriorated. Now, I want to remind you that don't look at the historical church. Look at yourself also and ask yourself how you began. Amen. Amen. If you are saved in the, in the style that I was saved, ask yourself how you began. Amen. Amen. Ask yourself, are you still in the commitment you were in at that time? Are you still as hungry and thirsty for him as you were at that time? The things you do now, do you do them because of the same reason you did them at that time? Let's say the name of the Lord. Because for for Jesus to say, I have someone against you, then it means that there must be a standard that has been lowered. Yet we see activities. So without love, what could be wrong with these activities? They maintained Christian activities. They, they, they gave themselves. They work patiently. Observing them from outside, you see a committed people. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Observing them from outside, you would see a committed people. You would admire them. You would admire them. Amen. Yet, the thing is this. Christ did not occupy the central position of their activities. They knew what to do and so they, it became like a, formal, a formality in their operations. Amen. I want to lead you in a prayer. This prayer is going to invite Jesus into your life. And he said that when he comes into your life, you become a new creation. It is not in a way we can explain, but in his divine way. But we receive it by faith. So when you have prayed this prayer by faith, you will know it is done. 
I'm not saying you will feel something in your body. But even if you feel no problem. But the feeling will not be the basis of your getting saved. You are getting saved will be on the basis of God's promise. Because he said that if you will believe in your heart and confess the Lord Jesus with your mouth you will be saved because with the heart a person believes and the righteousness with the mouth confession is made and salvation so that is all other things may follow according to his own grace but the basis is believing and confessing and you are also watching or you are listening from radio if you are not yet saved you can join up in this prayer and you too will be saved say Lord Jesus today I come to you I surrender my life to you Wash me by your blood. Write my name. In the Lamb's book of life. I refuse sin. With the whole of my heart. I denounce Satan. Plus all his works. I have prayed by faith. And I know I'm saved. Thank you, Jesus. Asante Yesu. For saving me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. I'll pray for you who have prayed that prayer. And I also pray for anybody who has a need. So if you have a need, just lift up your hand, I'll pray for you. And Jesus will hear and will answer. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, thank you because of this, my sister, who today has given herself to join this walk of righteousness. I pray, Lord, that you'll give her the strength, you'll uphold her, give her joy, give her peace, encourage her in this walk, Lord, my God to enjoy the fellowship of the brethren. Our Lord, glory shall be to you. I also pray for a blessing in her life. You have said that the old things are passed away. I pray all form of curses and disappointment to pass away in her life. Joy and peace to be her portion. Prosper in every area of prosperity. Our Lord and my God, behold the hands of your people lifted up unto you believing that you have an answer I pray that no hand shall go down without an answer I rebuke every form of pain I rebuke every form of sickness I rebuke every form of discomfort spirit of infirmity I rebuke you out of the lives of the people in the name of Jesus Christ I speak total restoration. I speak joy. I speak peace. I decree and declare victory in the name of Jesus. And Satan, I declare to you that among these people, you have been defeated and you have no power. You can't operate anymore. You can't hold anymore. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Ni una po amani kama shwa